Hello, my name is Kira Martin, Event Director with CCW Europe, and I'm joined here by Michelle Rue Jr., who we are honoured to have contributing as a special guest speaker at the CCW Executive Engagement Day in July. So, to give a very brief introduction of Michelle's extraordinary CV, after following in, in his father's footsteps, Michelle took over running with Gavroche in 1991, gradually changing the style of cooking to his own classic French with a lighter modern twist. Michel opened Rue at Parliament Square in May 2010, and in November of the same year, he opened Rue at the Landau at London's prestigious luxury hotels, the Langham. Michelle is a judge and presenter on the BBC's popular primetime show, MasterChef The Professional, and has been a presenter on all three series of Great British Food Revival. Michelle has also fronted the highly anticipated return of BBC Two's Food and Drink, and presented a documentary on Escoffier, whose revolutionary approach to fine cuisine has inspired Michelle and many others. Michelle is involved with the Rue Experience courses at Cactus Kitchen's Cookery School with executive producer of Saturday Kitchen, Amanda Ross. And Michelle is also a team sportsman who ran his 19th marathon in 2013 to raise funds for Victor, a charity supporting visually impaired children. He's also an honorary member of Harlequin's Rugby Club. So firstly, and most importantly, Michelle, how are you today? I'm great, thank you. Yeah, it's, uh, I've been looking forward to this. <laughs> uh -huh. Fantastic. Well, it's a pleasure to have you here with us. And I think it's fair to say it has been quite a year, particularly for the hospitality mm. industry. So I'm interested to hear, Michelle, how has lockdown affected your business activities and where, if any, have you found some areas to pivot? Yeah, I mean, obviously, um, we have suffered a lot in our, in our industry, uh, you know, hospitality in general. Um, I, I think we, you know, we were the first ones to be locked down and the last ones to be to be uh, let out again. But um, it, it's not the only industry. I mean, I, I think everybody has suffered, or more or less everybody has suffered. Um, but I think, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm the eternal optimist, and I will always look for a silver lining, or look for an opportunity, or, or, or look for the, you know, the positives. And um, out, out of all of this, yes, uh, there have been some positives. Um, I found that um, uh, you, you, I think in general, you look at all your staff and your team members and you will see particular ones shine through in hard times. And there was one particular young man who did an extraordinary job in the office um, and uh, turned this negative into a positive by uh, using the time during lockdown to rebuild our um, websites uh, and concentrate on our social media and our social media presence has grown um, and from that uh, we launched an e-shop um, so we're selling uh, Michel Roux branded products and Le Gavroche branded products, uh, signed books, house wines and such like so it turned into um, a, a, a new revenue stream which meant that I could keep not only this person on full time but also another person as well so you know that was just one little thing so you, in adversity you've always got to find that positive and there always is one there somewhere you just need to find it. Absolutely completely agree and obviously very glad to hear that you retain the core of your team so is there mm. anything in particular that you've done to try to maintain morale and positivity at this time? Yeah, that's very important. I mean, we, you know, we've been locked down uh, on and off uh, over the past 18 months. So communication is, is uh, really, really important. So every, um, every couple of weeks, three weeks, two to three weeks, um, I get a round robin email to everybody uh, just to say, look, we're still here. We're, you know, we're still intending to open. Um, and, uh, and then every now and then we'd have a Zoom catch up and, you know, a virtual drinks party or whatever. Um, and, and then the nearer we got to reopening, then uh, I would ask all the heads to give me how they thought that we could reopen. And so everybody would join in in feedback in how they see it. The, you know the best way to reopen um, and what changes they think we would need to do so it was a team effort and so bringing all of that together then I would obviously sort of you know work it all out but communication is really really important and not just with your team members of course with, with all your staff but also of course with your guests and that is vital because you're still communicating with them and saying we love you 
we're still here and we will be here when you know when all of this is finished and we want you back so you know it, it is it's, it's very very important vital absolutely that's good to hear and you're obviously surrounded by an incredible team of staff all the way from the front to the back of house and I know that training up and coming talent as well as continued development inside your organization is very important to you so do you have any advice that you would give to our listeners on training teams and collaborative leadership Yes, I think, you know, it, you, I mean, we, you just said about uh, longevity and loyalty of staff and a great team. Um, just recently, last week, our kitchen porter, Joao, uh, celebrated his 30th year that he's been working ah, for. Him. Incredible. Um, yeah, yeah, 30 years. Um, so, I mean, that's a lifetime. I mean, you mm. know, it really is a lifetime. He's grown up with us mm. and um, he's still doing the same job, although I've offered him time and time again, I've offered him you know, promotion and uh, you know i've even offered him a you know a company van so that he could do the market for us and you know things like nope i clean pots and pans that's my job that's what i want to do and which is which is wonderful you know it's fantastic so i think whatever the job in a company um it you know it is important and you have to make sure that everybody realizes that even if it is like joel cleaning pots and pans that person is important um and and you know quite rightly so because if he doesn't turn up if he's ill which he very very rarely is and you know <laughs> i could probably count the times you know he's the, the days he's had off uh, over the last 30 years through illness is probably less than five days mm. but you've got to you know say you know they are in fact they are probably the most important people in the company uh, and so communicating that and making sure that everybody understands that and you know that they are you know the the pillars of the company uh so yeah com again communication making sure that everyone works together that is vital too absolutely great advice and i think that's testament to you and your organization and the gavroche has obviously become a household name over many many years due to its outstanding reputation so I'd love to hear what it has taken to build and maintain that level of customer trust. Mm. I think it's being true to your roots. Um, mm. you know, we, my father and uncle opened the business in 1967 and it was a you know, very, very classic French restaurant, uh, French wine list and you know, French, French classic cooking. Um, over the years, I've lightened it up. Um, and I, I think I've made the, the service as well a lot more convivial and, and what customers or guests expect nowadays um, but nonetheless we are true to our roots and that is a French restaurant and if you want to indulge and you want to have a nice sauce with your steak or you know a nice calorie laden meal which means you're being indulgent and you're very full at the end of the meal then Le Gavroche is going to tick that box it's also going to tick the box of comfort of, of being feeling cosseted um, and a very French wine list. I mean, there are a few new wine, new world wines now, but but it is a very French wine list. So I think you know, that 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 is key. Um, so staying true to your roots uh, and and you know not 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 sort of going too far from that. Yes, I can still be innovative in my in the style of cooking, and I can still you know do. Uh, do something of course it's a very difficult line to tread as well because staying true to your roots doesn't mean that you cannot be innovative and, and cannot sort of um be modern because if you if you if you stay too true to your roots you stagnate and if you're stagnating then people will run away from you so it's a very fine line but yeah i, I think your core core business is french and based on classic cooking Absolutely. Great advice. And, and Michelle, you are one of um, only 23 two Michelin star chefs in the UK. So speaking of a service there, I'd love to know what does delivering and extraordinary customer experience mean to you? And how do you maintain service excellence? Yeah, well, service excellence and, and you know, food excellence uh, for me is, is teamwork. So, you know, uh, Chef Rachel, for example, she started as an apprentice. 25 years ago, something like that, um, and still with me and the Gaetano, the head chef, 15 years and so on and so forth, and Joao, the kitchen porter, 30 years, um, uh, front of house, 
likewise you know that they that the pillars there there's, there's five or six of them that have been with with me for more than 20 years so you know you, you build a very very strong team and, and you make sure that they feel that the restaurant is almost theirs well it is it's theirs mm -hmm. in, you know, in all essence it's their business it's their you know whatever they do they're doing it not just for me of course they're doing it for the company yes but they're doing it out of self-pride because it's theirs so they take ownership and i think that's important to be able to make sure that everybody takes ownership and is proud of what they are doing i think that's that's also key fantastic and on the other hand do you see people making you know common mistakes when it comes to customer service and, and excellence mm. in this sort of area yes now there are there are many common mistakes uh, that are made and and I mean, none more so than chefs you know chefs are you know big-headed very often <laughs> you know, they're, they're cooking for their own ego uh, and they think you know customers are going to come back just because of their beautiful plates of food that they're doing well, well that's just entirely wrong and you and i and everybody knows that if the service is bad mm. um, you're not going to return so you know it's an experience and, and it's very important to get that experience right so the food yeah has to be good obviously um, but the whole experience so that from the moment you pick up the phone to make a booking or you go on there on the website to make a booking that has to be a, a good experience absolutely completely seamless so that was great to hear can we quickly touch upon your passion for exercise i know that you have previously run in excess of 20 marathons and i know mm. that running provides you with some balance outside of work so what has your time as both a marathon runner and as a michelin star chef taught you about resiliency yeah i think you know exercise is important i think um uh, it's important for physical health obviously but more importantly i feel for uh, mental health um uh, which is a very you know, topical subject at the moment uh, especially with lockdown and i think this you know, with lockdown i think it's a bit of a time bomb that uh, that, that, that we're going to be facing and um, mental health through lockdown has been very difficult but um yeah i, I think exercise and I, and I don't mean you know crazy exercise like i was doing i'm not running marathons anymore because my poor knees and legs can't take it anymore but <laughs> but um uh, I always say, you know, at least 20 minutes a day set aside for yourself and just get the heart running. And that might just be, you know, speed walking or power walking, as it's called, I think, um, or, or just you know, 20 minutes of getting your heart rate up. Um, and I, I tend to you know, not listen to music or, or just stay away. And that's you know, time by myself, time to reflect, time to release, um, get the endorphins going. And uh, you might feel physically tired afterwards but you certainly feel mentally refreshed afterwards absolutely i couldn't agree more well finally just as a last word to our attendees in the custom care sector i'm interested to know what you think will be the most important thing for leaders to be focusing on as we do look to move beyond the pandemic in the mm. months and years ahead um experience and customer care mm -hmm. I, I think you know that is that is uh, really uh what we have to focus on um I think what, what we've done during lockdown, um, we, we've ordered a lot of stuff online. We've, we, you know, we've, in fact, everything online, takeaways, delivery services, you know, a lot online. Um, and there is no real service there. There's no con human contact. So I think we've lost uh, that. We, we're missing that as a, as a guest, as a customer, as a paying customer. We're missing that human contact. And looking somebody in the eye and looking at their sort of um, interaction and physical interaction, as in not touching, but sort of gesticulating like I'm doing now. I'm talking like an Italian using my hands. <laughs> you can see that. And, you know, that is important. Um, and, I, you know, I think that's what we're going to have to focus on and get right. We are out of practice, front of house, and, and you know, we're out of practice. So we need to get back into that. Um, and, and I think people will be looking at that. Guests will be looking at that to see how we do it, especially if we still have to wear masks as well and we still have to social distance. Uh, so, you know, that's that's difficult. Agreed. Wonderful. Well, Michelle, we truly appreciate your time and your insight. It's been an honour to have you join us for this pre-event session. Uh, but until next time, best of luck with the full reopening of your restaurants. And we, of course, very much look forward to seeing you again live on July 28th. Wonderful. Look forward to seeing you.